Want to become an AI trailblazer in the product world? Pragmatic Institute's newest workshop, AI for Product Professionals, is your ticket to generative AI mastery. In this hands-on training, learn to master chat GPT and prompt engineering to transform your product strategies, rapidly create content, optimize workflows, and make razor-sharp product decisions fueled by data. Don't just keep up with the AI revolution. Lead it. Seats are limited. Enroll today at pragmaticinstitute.com slash AI workshop. Hello, and welcome to the Pragmatic Product Chat series, where we tackle the biggest challenges facing today's product management, product marketing, and other market and data-driven professionals with some of the best minds in the industry. I'm Rebecca Calajaris for Pragmatic Institute and your host for this episode. And today, I'm very excited. We have a repeat attendee to our show who's been on here previously, but was interviewed by someone else. And that is Isaac Lean, co-founder, chief artificial intelligence and innovation officer at GrandPad. Welcome, Isaac. Hey, great to be here. All right, Isaac, for those who haven't had the pleasure of hearing the other episode with you on this, let's give a little bit about your background, what I like to call your origin story, how you got where you are today and why you're so passionate about what you do. Yeah, so kind of my origin in the technology space and in building products started when I was uh, pretty young. I was very inspired by Steve Jobs, seeing him, you know, announce all the new versions of iPods. And when the iPhone was announced, I was just enthralled by it, fascinated by it. So when I was, I believe, 12 is when the App Store came out originally. And I had one of the first apps in the App Store. It was a simple app for children to learn their basic multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, all their math facts. So it was the first math flashcards app on the iPhone in the App Store. It was featured in Apple stores worldwide, which was kind of the coolest thing, probably still that's maybe ever happened to me. <laughs> um, and that really, <laughs> that really, um, you know, showed me the the power of technology for, you know, improving people's lives. In that case, it was the idea was parents, you know, could hand their phone to their kids and they could help them learn. But fast forwarding, you know, to what we do today, there's there's a connection to kind of my passion for technology that that empowers people. Moving forward from that, you know, I was studying computer science at Chapman University at the time that my dad, uh, Scott Lean, and I had the idea for what became GrandPad. And that was the challenges we had in our own life was our family was all out on the West Coast in Southern California. All my grandparents were in small towns in Iowa where they had lived their whole lives. And it was very hard for us to just do a phone call with them. Mm. Uh, My grandma had severe hearing loss. We did a phone call with her. She couldn't hear. And it was it was a neurological perception issue. It was not something that hearing aids could fix. So the sound would get scrambled kind of coming into when she was hearing it. So the only way she could really communicate was if she could read lips. We tried to do video calls with Skype on her desktop at the time, that was too hard for her because we might write down instructions for her, but then Skype would update or her computer Mm. would update. And those Mm. instructions that were printed out and she could follow would become out of date very quickly. So we ended up designing what became GrandPad. We just made a simple way for her to tap on an Android device or on a tablet, press a button, it would video call us, we could answer. And it worked great for her. She didn't have the frustration she had before with technology, which showed us, okay, if we can make the technology sufficiently seamless, then people like my grandma, who was actually very hesitant towards using technology, they didn't think of it as kind of technology anymore. It was just a mm. way to, to talk with her grandson or her, her, her children. So that was kind of the unlock. And that led us to where we are today. We founded GrandPad just over 10 years ago now. We have users across the US and around the world. And we've touched the lives of over a million people who have connected to our platform. I love that story. And I also, I mean, I think that's one of the things like when you talk to Diane previously on the show, it was really about just how grounded GrandPad is in market research and understanding your personas, not just your specific grandma, but sort of the the older population and the, and the use of technology and how that really differentiates what you built. And like you said, what it really enables them to do is stop thinking of it as that as technology and just started thinking of it as a way to communicate as a helpful device, no longer that sort of barrier. And since you've been on here, there has been uh, some really interesting developments, not just at your company, but overall, as we think about technology here and that, and by that, I mean like the, the rise of generative AI AI is not new, but certainly we see it in a different way in a different level of accessibility. And I think what's a really interesting case study is that 
how you incorporate the sort of latest innovation and technology while staying really, really grounded in an understanding of your market. Because for me, and this again, this was my own limit of thinking, I wouldn't have gone first to the senior market when I was thinking about how to leverage the latest technology. But that is as in fact something that you guys have done and just released and some new stuff. So talk to me a little bit about how that AI journey came about and how you were able to leverage like this latest, coolest techie technology for your core market. Yeah. So AI and, you know, being able to talk with computers in a very conversive, natural, human-like way has been something I've actually been excited about since I was maybe 14 or 15 years old. I remember my high school computer science project was I made a chat bot where you could chat with the computer and it, you know, I did everything I could using every trick I could to make it feel very lifelike. It wasn't really AI, but it was kind of using tricks to, to make it sound interesting. You could have kind of a conversation with this. That was, gosh, how, how uh, 15 plus years ago now. But since then, you know, we've always wanted on GrandPad to have it be as seamless and accessible mm-hmm. to our users as possible. We wanted to, you know, someone to be able to just pick it up. We have something called the 90-90 design goal where a 90-year-old should be able to love and use GrandPad within 90 seconds. Mm. And that means it needs to be very intuitive. So we've been looking at this kind of conversive interface for a long time, even since the beginning of our company. You know, many years ago, I remember at CES, maybe eight or nine years ago, it was voice assistance was the big thing. Google and Alexa assistants were in mm. every product. You know, you had the toaster you could talk to with, <laughs> with Alexa and, and all these things. And, you know, we had lots of requests for it from, you know, often from the family members who would buy for their parents, say, hey, can it, you talk with it? Things like that. And we tested out in Alexa, Google Assistant onto GrandPad. We tested our own assistant product that we, we made where we made our own voice assistant. And we ran into a lot of challenges. There's kind of two main challenges that we saw that made us decide to not launch this product. The first was the speech to text recognition. So just being able to talk and the you know machine being able to recognize what the user is saying, the technology was not good enough. It was maybe 97% accurate. Google's had some very good models for years. But the problem is that 3%, let's say you know you speak roughly 100 words, it gets three words wrong. That actually causes a lot of problems. It's very hard to fix mistakes, especially when some of our users have accessibility challenges where, Mm. you know, scrolling back over, typing in an on-screen keyboard to fix a mistake, that's very hard. And it's frustrating when you're sending an email to your son or you're trying to, you know, do something on GrandPad and it gets it wrong. You don't have a good way to fix it. And there was an AI where it could follow up and say, Hey, did you mean this or that? So that was a blocker. The text, the, the speech recognition was not good enough. Secondly was, when you have a voice assistant and the domain of things that can do is, is fairly small, the user actually, it's kind of an unconscious user experience challenge. They need to have a very strong sense of what a voice assistant can and can't do. So I remember one time we tested our voice assistant with a, with an elderly user who had never used any Alexa or Google Assistant or Siri. We said, Hey, this is a voice assistant. You just say, Hey, grandpad, and you can ask it anything. And I remember we put it down and she said, Hey, grandpad, bring me a cup of coffee. <laughs> Right. The instruction. And the thing is, right, we were the ones who were stupid because we told her, ask it anything. Right. And she asked it anything. But, you know, she didn't know, oh, well, maybe it could do Uber Eats if I have an Uber account attached to this or that. Right. You need a huge kind of paradigm. Mm. But that's all transparent. And that's something we don't all think about. People think, oh, yeah, an Alexa, just put an Alexa in, you know, a 105 year old house, someone who has, you know, has never used a computer, it's it's not going to be the end all be all. Maybe it's helpful for for things like weather or lights, which is what most people <laughs> use them for anyway, myself included. So that was our journey. But fast forwarding to 2019, I was playing around with a GPT-2 at the time, which was amazing. It kind of was in this uncanny valley situation where you could see the potential, it could do amazing things, but it would really go off and hallucinate on tangents or get things wrong in a big way where, you know, There was no product to be built on it in any reliable way, Mm -hmm. but the promise was there. So then, you know, of course, ChatGPT was released in November 2022. And that really kind of was like a bomb that dropped on uh, (laughs) the whole world, but especially the technology space where we saw, wow, the model, the large language model is really kind of ready for prime time. It's extremely capable and there's a lot of promise. So when that came out, we immediately you know, tested, played with it, saw the potential. And we started going through, okay, what can we start to build that impacts our company that that can help our users? I'm happy to dive more into that, but that's kind of the journey up till when we started to, you know, to build something on top of these tools. That's great. It's great to see sort of how the the thinking has always been there, the testing, 
but you had to wait till the technology was there and reliable enough to really put it into the systems. And I think that I think that's how a lot of us feel about some of the generative AI stuff, right? We know it's not new, new, but it's so much more accessible and it's so much more solid than it had been. When we talked about this before, one of the things that I found super interesting was that you were talking about that one of the things that sets AI apart is that it's very user directed, right? Meaning that how it works and what it does is really defined by the user and how that changes how you think about putting it into your product. And I just think that's super interesting. So I would love to dig in sort of how did that aspect of generative AI affect how you built it and and how you market it? Yeah. So back to that kind of challenge I mentioned around when you have a, an open-ended product where you can just talk with it, the user needs to have some kind of context of what they, they can and cannot do. So when we first, you know, tested and to share more about what we have launched. So recently, uh, last month, we launched to the world. It's now available. Can you buy GrandPad from us? Grandy. So Grandy is a virtual assistant who you can chat with anytime on your GrandPad. It's a cute little blue owl character who's there to, to chat and you can just have a conversation with it. And it is it is more of a character than something like a ChatGPT. If you ask ChatGPT, hey, how's your day? ChatGPT will say, I'm a large language model. I have no you know emotions. Grandy is a character. It has a, you know, a background and a life that it kind of lives and you can chat with it about that, but you can also use it to talk about, you know, the knowledge of the world and all the other things that these large language models have access to. And we're rapidly expanding what it can do where it soon it'll be able to control things on the grand pad, look up more real time information and so forth. But so it's an amazing product. We're getting great feedback, but if someone, you know, like many of us, when we got chat GPT, you know, a, a year ago, you don't quite know what you can do, right? Like, you know, you can ask it the standard questions. How tall was Steve Jobs? Or, you know, what's the capital of, you know, uh, wherever. But until you start unlocking and saying, oh, I can ask it really long questions or really complicated mm-hmm. kind of multifactored questions for our users, right? Just like all of us, you know, they're, they're learning along at the same time with us. Maybe they have less experience with technology. What we are doing is we're really trying to make it easy for them to see the benefit uh, without, you know, knowing all the context that people who have become great prom- prompt engineers know. So. When you open Grandy, you can, of course, just chat with it in an open-ended conversation. But we also have these suggested prompts or topics that we call them where they can just tap on something and it might be, let's play a word game. Let's mm. play trivia about a topic that I get to choose. My grandpa loved vintage John Deere tractors. So that would have been the type of game he would have loved to play. And he would have been quite good at that. Or, you know, travel or so on and so forth, famous inventions. And Grandy then will start these guided conversations with the user where, It'll talk, you know, through a trivia game, but then it can ask and follow up about things about that. And then a conversation is really kicked off from that starting point. And we've seen actually prompts, these topics are the most popular way currently to use Grandy because again, they're on this journey of learning, just like all of us are, how to use these, these tools in a way that benefits them. And then we see after they use the jumping off points, the topics, they learn more to, you know, use Grandy for more of open-ended things where they just come in and start asking it to help them with whatever it is that they need. How did you determine, like, was it, you obviously had some hypothesis about how they might typically use it or might find attractive to it. How did you determine, like, what those initial prompts would be that, hey, I bet they'd like games or, you know, how did you kind of go from all of the infinite, almost infinite options that you could do to, hey, here's some good starting points that we think will be, will fit a need of them, but also be accessible. Yeah. So, you know, it's a combination of things. And when we design any, anything for GrandPad, there's, there's always this mix. So, you know, first and foremost, and you touched on this before, we have an extensive uh, user testing and user feedback kind of practice at GrandPad. We have a group of grand advisors who are part of the GrandPad team. They're people in their 80s, 90s, and 100s who help us with the design process. So they come to us with new ideas. And when we have new ideas, we always test it with them first. So this group advises us on what we build. We get their feedback. And that's a very strong part of how we build our product. Also, we have data. So we can see, you know, on the grand pad, what games are most popular? Mm. We, we know that games are extremely popular with our users. People will spend, in some cases, hours uh, per day playing, you know, uh, cognitive fitness games. And, and we see that and we can say, okay, well, we can, you know, incorporate those into Grandy. We also have different news topics and articles and we can see what's popular there and use that for Grandy. And then finally is there's sometimes things that Grandy enables that wasn't even possible before. So that might just be us, you know, taking a hypothesis and saying, hey, we're going to you know, come up with this really cool new prompt idea. One that we're working on here now is kind of a, kind of like an escape room type game where Ooh. basically it's like kind of solving a, a mystery and it's dynamically generated mystery and there'll be clues and you can just talk with Grandy kind of back and forth in this kind of adventure style game. So that's something that, you know, we couldn't have built before that's enabled. And we'll test that and see, you know, 
do people like that or not? And the amazing thing with large language model tools is they allow a, a level of rapid testing, right? Mm-hmm. To, to make something like that, this adventure game, we can do that very quickly and test it and get feedback very quickly. It won't take months and months of, of development time as it might have, you know, before these tools were available. It seems like too, even the way you talk about how it communicates back, there's obviously, you know, the the natural chatting is, is part of its appeal. I think in understanding your market and what you've talked about before, there is sometimes, you know, less connections, right? They have less people around sometimes. There's a, a bigger desire for that sort of human feeling connection. And I'm sure that was an aspect of your thinking as you were creating this and also trying to find the right balance of where it feels like a friendly character that they can chat with, but doesn't become, you know, the nightmare over over relation. So talk a little bit about how you guys found that balance and what was your goal and how you kind of kept on target there. Yeah. So it comes back to our mission at GrandPad, which is to improve the lives of millions of seniors by reconnecting them with their family, friends, and caregivers. So I'll importantly note that in that mission, it doesn't talk about technology or tablets mm-hmm, or AI mm-hmm. or anything like that, right? That happens to be our skill set. And that's, those are some of the tools that we use to, you know, achieve this mission. And with AI and generative AI, it's all the same in terms of what our job to do is, you know, we're technology people, we're designers. We want to use our skills to bring the benefits of technology and the ways that technology can connect families and older people. We want to take those benefits and deliver them to, to our users. So. With AI, we take that same approach and we want Grandy to be a tool that helps connect families even more. So, you know, Grandy can help encourage the user to to try things on GrandPad, to to call people or, you know, maybe they've never sent a voice email to their whole family. It can encourage them to do that, for example. But at the same time, per per what you mentioned, loneliness is a huge challenge. And Mm. there are people who don't have family, who you know, who's in the picture or people like my grandma, my grandma on my mom's side. She had 10 kids. She had over 30 grandkids, over 30 great grandkids. She had a huge family. People who lived very close. But after my grandpa, her husband passed away, her nights were very lonely. Mm. She lived independently in her home and she'd be lying awake at 3 a.m. And, you know, she's not going to call her kids. She doesn't want to bother them or her grandkids. She's in, you know, in the house alone where her husband had, had been for, you know, they married over 50 years. So, In the past, she would open GrandPad and she would look at some of the videos of her grandkids, things like that. But, you know, now something like Grandy, you could at least chat with Grandy. And, you know, we're not, there was not going to be human connection for her, Mm -hmm. you know, awake at night at 3 a.m., right? But at least you could chat and use it like a virtual journal where you just say, hey, here's how I'm feeling. And Grandy will just be an empathetic ear. So we see cases like that as being very beneficial for people. Another use case also, you know, we have some users where they are connected with their family, but they have many health issues that they just want to talk about it. It's just venting, right? Mm-hmm. But they they feel, hey, when I talk with my my daughter about this all the time, I know I'm bothering her. I know I'm worrying her. I'm just, you know, I'm having a back issue and she doesn't want to hear about it every day, but I just need to vent about it. Grandy's also great for things like that. Mm-hmm. So we don't want to replace, in any case, human connections. We want Grandy to encourage and foster those things. But there are times where it's nice to just chat with, you know, with someone or uh, Grandy when you're not replacing some other human connection. Yeah. The other thing, as I was thinking about this, when we talked about this was how do you market Grandy? And and I think about this for a couple of reasons. One, it's a product you're not 100% sure how they'll use, right? So there's, there's that. And the other aspect of is for a lot of when we see new products that have a Gen AI component, we talk a lot about the technology. We're like, this takes advantage of Gen AI. And I was like, oh, I know what that means. This is exciting, right? But for this audience, there isn't that same sort of necessarily clarity or familiarity or excitement about the tech itself. So how how do you bring that to market? How do you make it really resonate with them what this will offer? Yeah, so in terms of how we market this product, which uses generative AI, we're big fans of Simon Sinek and he talks about the start with why. So, mm-hmm. you know, when you're when you're talking about a product or a service or something, right? You tell them why it's important first, and then you work your way out and tell, you know, the how and the what of what it actually is. And same with our core product, the GrandPad tablet. If you go to our site, you're not going to see us talking about, you know, what's the gigahertz uh, on the the Wi-Fi (laughs) connection and how many megabytes and et cetera, because it does not matter for what we're doing. What we're doing is connecting families, letting you share photos, doing a video call, providing a complete seamless user experience. You know, people want to, you know, ask us on live chat about those things that, you know, the tech savvy uh, kids buying it as a gift. We're happy to talk through those things, but that's not the benefit. That's not what we start with. So with Granny, it's the same. Granny is a way to 
access the world's information, to explore your hobbies and passions, to have fun back and forth chats and banter, to hear jokes of the day, to, you know, learn more about your grand pad. We focus on those things to more easily, you know, to, to navigate technology in a more accessible way, right? We have many users where dexterity is a, is a, is a huge mm, challenge. Mm-hmm. And we see Grandy as unlocking, you know, use cases for more people who maybe couldn't even use a grand pad before. We, we want to have a mode where you can just, you know, basically completely hands-free or no fine motor movement needed to operate the grand pad and still get all the benefits. So those are the things that we'll focus on. We're not going to talk about AI or LLMs or Gen AI, things like that. Because that's not what, what people come to us for. They come to us for solutions to connect with their family, to connect with caregivers. Excellent. So as you, as you guys go forward, I know you just launched it recently, but I also know one of the things you did with Grandpad and one of the things I know you're planning on doing this is sort of iterate, right? Continue to watch and evolve the offering in this space. How do you guys approach that? How do you get the feedback you know? And how do you know when you've got feedback to test something different? Yeah, so the feedback loop is very important and it's pretty interesting because Gen AI is, you know, is moving so fast. You know, we kind of had a, even around the last 10 years, we've kind of had a more, more or less stable situation in terms of kind of mobile, the tools, the technologies, the platforms, nothing has really been shifting in any big way, right? It's been pretty iterative. Now with Gen AI, things are moving so fast where you need to be following this industry, you know, week to week if you're operating in it and seeing the new things coming out. And there's a lot of, you know, shiny objects yeah. that could be chased. And in some cases, you know, maybe should be chased. And it requires a level of discipline and curiosity kind of in balance. So, you know, we've set an AI focused team around this where we have kind of all the resources needed to, to build on this. And the reason we've done that is, like I said, because it's moving so fast, we need everyone on the team to be very up to speed on all the technologies, have, you know, a level of depth with all the tools we're using and the, the ability and capability to do lots of research around new things. Every week we're researching new things, say, oh, there's this new thing announced that allows like real time instantaneous, you know, voice conversations with an AI. We test that out. We see if it's possible. We see how it actually performs in in practice. So we're testing lots of things internally to see if we can see the benefit Mm -hmm. because sometimes, right, it's, it's not about the, what the users are asking for. It's about, we see some new thing that the technology enables and we can go build it and then test it. Sometimes it's, you know, with Grandy, right, we get user requests where we have user feedback sessions with our grant advisors and, and our customers, we can incorporate those things into it as well. So it's watching all those, you know, watching on all those areas and then having the, the discipline to say, okay, we've looked at, you know, thing, new technologies we can build. We're seeing what people are doing with the data. We're seeing what we're requesting. And then having the discipline to choose, okay, well, these are the things that we see having the highest impact that we can build quickly. And then kind of attacking those new features and kind of just continually doing that. And we're trying to move as fast as possible. And we're moving quite fast in this space while maintaining a level of, you know, the same security practices we have throughout the GrantPad platform, the, the, you know, extensive QA and safety layers that we, we have in place. So it's, it's balancing all those, all those things together. It's got to be a pretty exciting time though. Oh, it's extremely exciting. I mean, for me, like I said, you know, I was excited and ecstatic with the original iPhone release and, and the app store. That was, that was huge. This is the next, <laughs> next time I, I felt like that where the future is so wide open and, and so exciting. And there's just so many new things to be built, right? You know, the iPhone enabled things we couldn't have imagined, right? Uber, for example, right? We didn't think it would revolutionize kind of car, the way we use cars and taxis and. AI, there's going to be all these use cases, which, you know, we can't conceive now or those who can conceive them will, will be very uh, su- successful over the next 10 years. So yeah, it's, it's extremely exciting times and, and it's fun to just watch it unfold and to also be a part of it unfolding. Yeah, I bet. It's really fun to watch as well. I watch you guys continue to evolve. It's such a strong mission that you have. It's fun to see how you continue to, to build on that and serve the market. All right. So we've got lots of people listening in that tech space and lots of people, I think, who have either who are in some level of thinking about or currently doing this sort of, how do I, how do I make generative AI make sense for my product in my market? And we talked about lots of different things, lots of different things you were doing, but if you were going to give two pieces of advice, if you're going to have listeners do two things differently tomorrow, based on what we talked about today, what would that be? Yeah. So the first thing I would, I would recommend everyone to do who has an interest, and I think lots of people probably should uh, have an interest in this space is you should be using you know, generative AI tools in your life every day, you know, as much as you can and really remind yourself it, you know, I was using a lot in the beginning, but it took me consciously saying, okay, I'm going to like, when I have some task or problem I need to solve, I will go to these tools first. And now I'm using GPT-4, I, you know, as my kind of go-to cloud three, I've been testing as well. 
I always go to that and I use that as my first year and I say, can AI help me do this faster, mm-hmm. better, mm-hmm. Um, et cetera? And in many cases, the answer is yes, that's what I do. If it can, then I you know go do it the kind of traditional way. But I looked at these tools first, at least as a starting point or first draft. And the other thing that ties into that is that's been a huge unlock for me is using, you know, the chat GPT app on your iPhone, the voice transcription is they, they have their whisper uh, API that or their whisper platform they use for, or for the voice transcription. It's incredibly accurate. It's 99 plus percent accurate. It's like human level accuracy. So you can just talk with it and have natural conversations with it and have a rambling, you know, I'll say, say I need to make some project plan kind of draft. I'll talk kind of off the cuff for two and a half minutes and I'm and on thinking about this and that. It's incredible at taking all that and, you know, hearing it correctly and then putting great output. Mm. So the voice is a huge unlock. Typing, you know, it's actually, we can, we can think more kind of extemporaneously while speaking. So doing that is a huge unlock that's been extremely useful for me. And the other thing is just diving more deeply into kind of understanding how the technologies work, because doing that helps you kind of see where the ball is, is is going a little bit more, where you can kind of understand the nature of how these technologies will improve, what things will improve them. For instance, right, as more GPUs become available for companies to uh, train the models for longer, we'll, you know, we'll have more powerful models as there's more, uh, as the inference speed increases, right, you'll have models that are more real time. So seeing where that can go helps you understand, okay, what type of things I could could build on these technologies as they're moving. Because looking at it today and saying, oh, I tested this and it, it didn't work well, you know, we'll be so far ahead a year from now. And also remembering that the, the existence of these technologies accelerates the pace of their own development. So things will move in, should be improving at an accelerating pace. So those would be kind of the the two things I would, I would recommend everyone do, but really focus on using it every day for professional work as a starting point. And you can always do it the traditional way, or at least take what uh, the LLM generated as a first draft. Love that. Great advice. All right, Isaac, if people wanted to learn more about your company and keep kind of track of all the great things you're doing, where would where should we send them? Yeah, so you can learn more about Grandy, uh, which we just released at grandy.ai. And you can learn more about Grandpad at grandpad.net. And yeah, if you, you know, if anyone here has a loved one who struggles with technology or you want to keep better in touch with, Grandpad's always a great, great thing to try. Or you can, you know, if you're interested in uh, joining our team and helping us on our mission, we're always looking for great people, especially right now in the AI space. So we're um, excited to, to connect with anyone who can help us in that area. Awesome. All right, Isaac, it was, as always, just absolutely wonderful to have you on. I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, great chatting, Rebecca. Thank you. All right, that does it for today's episode. Thanks everyone for listening. And don't forget to join us next week when we tackle another great topic designed to help you elevate your product, your company, and your career. <laughs>